Let's remain standing for the reading of God's word. It's taken from 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 to 5. Let's read the verses uh, responsibly. I'll be reading the first verse and the last verse will read it all together. Here is a trustworthy saying, whoever aspires to be an overseer desires a noble task. Not given to drunkenness, not violent, not gentle, not quarrelsome, not the lover of money. If anyone does not know how to manage his own family, how can he take care of God's truth? Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you, God, for this day that you have gathered us once more to this place. So we can praise and worship you and sing songs to you, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done. Lord, I pray that you prepare every heart and every mind here that you will condition them for the for the receiving of your word. And I pray, Lord God, that you would supply us the wisdom and understanding that we need so that we can grasp everything that you want us to learn today. I ask for the Holy Spirit of God to lead me and guard me from error. I ask for God that only your word would flow through my mouth. And may reach our hearts with power and cause us to have changed lives. I pray, Lord God, that through your word today, every family will be changed, will be impacted by your word today. Lord, I ask for the Holy Spirit once again to take charge and take over. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you, may, you may now take your seats. Uh, before we proceed, though, we have a film uh, from C2 Unit Corporation with Team Ministry. Panalori po muna natin. sa pangalang Luna. Sumulat po ako sa inyo upang ibahagi ang aking suriranin tungkol sa aking pangyayon. Pagkabang maayos naman po ang kabukayan, pero minsan, pahirandang po ay ipalis mo ang nagiging dahilan upang kayo ay nangyayon ng kayaan. Sabihin pa ang kami ay nasa iisang bubong lamang, pero para bang ang lalong lalong namin sa bawat isa? Sana po ay matulungan niyo ako. Okay. 
the way the moon, the stars, the oceans, or the whole universe belong to God. The church belongs to God the way your family belongs to you. Now, why do you Is it clear? No. The church belongs to God as His family is special. His belonging as a church to God is special to Him. The way your family is special to you. Like us, how do we see that precious of our family? Most of us are here to make uh, we sacrifice the pagkasama natin ng pamilya natin because we want to give them a better life. We want to give them a better future. Ano ba naman is we chose to bring our family here and uh, sacrifice savings. I know I nakarelate na naman siguro kayo dito. Na, if you bring your family here, you're choosing between money and family. So sacrifice your savings. Ang pangino naman, what did he do to show that his family, us, the church, is precious to him? He sent his son to die on the cross for us. He go back. The point of this uh, verse is that the family of God, which is us, the church, is so precious to him. Okay, Bob? Let's proceed to point number two. Now, God wants leaders that care, that truly care for his family, the church. The same verse it says, take care of God's church. He wants people to care for his church. He wants people to take care. He wants people, leaders, a set of a group of people to give care for his church. Not just to work out of duty. Not just to serve in the church out of duty because it's government to see or whatever. But people, God wants people to care, really care. He wants people to have the strength to lead his church and the heart to care. He wants people that see the need of the church and have the desire to meet the needs of the church. Just like Peter in John 21, verses 15 to 17, Jesus asked him three times, Peter, do you love me? Three times. And said to Peter, yes, of course, Lord, you know that I love you. You know everything. And said to Jesus Christ, feed my lambs, take care of my sheep, and feed my sheep. Why feed? Because when you feed, you are satisfying the need. So that's what God wants some of the leaders to take really care with concern. The way you take care of your own family, that's how God wants you to take care of His big family, the church. And the same thing is in the LG. When you take care of your LG, since LG is God's church, part of God's family, you take care of your LG the way you take care of your own family. Are you with me? Let's proceed. So the qualification of a leader. Since his family is so precious to God, his family is so precious to him, and he wants, and his command is I want a group of people, specialized people, to take care of this very precious family of mine. I want highly qualified people. And I don't mean qualification. He, ma he must manage his own family well. It means you manage most of family is just a prerequisite to managing or taking care of God's church. Kung kaya niyo mamanage ng small family, then perhaps you are qualified to manage God's bigger family, which is the church. Kung kaya niyo mamanage yung family well, then maybe you have the quality that God wants, which is the leadership that has the strength to lead and the heart the heart that cares, concerned. So, how does managing the family look like? How should it look like in a biblical perspective? So, the same as any other organization, even a secular organization, for an organization to uh, function and to be well managed by the manager or the leader, every member, every key player in the organization has to know their roles and responsibilities. Dapat alam nila yung roles and responsibilities that for the manager, it would be easier for him to manage because meron siya pagbabasihan. Are you performing according to what you, the responsibilities have been given to you? So the same as in the family, every member of the family should know their roles and responsibilities. And I just found a text na tamang tama for that. And that is, of course, Ephesians 5. The roles and responsibilities designed by God. Be very careful that how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. 
Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. In context, right now, Christian, don't live as otherwise the way you lived before. Now, here's how you live. When you live, you must seek Lord's will. You know? Before, instead, kung may problema ka, dumaretso ka dun sa sari-sari store, ang bilhin ng red horse, and uh, drown yourself with beer or alcohol, whatever. Now, it's here, it's not that way. You be filled with the Spirit is how you deal with life situation. So meaning, ang be filled po dito, yung verb na be filled, is being constantly filled or being empowered, led by the Spirit. It's a continuous process. It's not a one-time event. Nagpani po. So, preparation pa lang po ito. Papunta tayo dun sa family. So first, be filled with the Spirit, be led by the Spirit, and then, we'll see anong next. Next, and then, as you are filled with the Spirit, then you can speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always give me thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now you are filled with the Spirit. You are empowered by God to give Him thanks in everything, in every situation that you may be in. Because you are led by the Spirit, you can give thanks to Him in everything. Now, so, Spirit, here's your command. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. It means husband to submit to the wife, wife to submit to the husband, kids submit to the wife, sub kids submit to the parents, and parents submit to. How will that happen? You know? This is a, this is the divine design of God. Now, as you're filled with the Spirit, you submit to one another in particular ways. My design of Pagan, you know? in specific ways. A wife should submit to this husband in this way. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church, his body, of which he is the Savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. So, I'm going to learn that in that. Here. Christian wife, Christian mom. A wife is to submit to her own husband. Not every, to every man, he is the head of her. Hindi po kayo sasabit sa husband ng neighbor niyo, but sa husband mo lang. Nagawa niyo? It's an instruction sa Biblia. Ano ba? A wife is to willingly submit to her husband in personal obedience to the Lord. You don't submit to your husband because your husband is worthy of your submission. But you submit to your husband. Now, excuse me. Now you submit to your husband because he's commanded by God directly to you. It's your personal obedience. Kaya si sis Alma, po yung magsasabit pa rin siya kay Julius, kay Aligaros. No matter kung he was not managing the family well, because it's a command from God. Next, a wife is to submit her husband in everything. Hindi lang one thing, hindi something, but in everything as the church submits to Christ. Okay ba yung husband ito? Okay ba? As the, uh, in everything. But now, how does the church submit to Christ? The church submits to Christ as Christ has done. Provider, protector, savior, from need. He's saying a wife should submit to her husband as he is the provider. Provide as he is the protector, he is protect your wife, savior from need, savior from sickness, spiritual guide of husband, and source of safety, and etc. So, okay, okay, then, husband, my responsibility, parano? with great power comes great responsibility. So, then, then, you way of submission of husband. Sa wife. Magsasamit pa rin yung husband sa wife. Yes, but in this way. The husband should love your wife. This is how you need your wife. You have to love your wife. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her with washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and pleasing. Ano po nakuha natin doon? In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated their own body, but they feed and care for their body just as Christ does the church. We know what happened. Happy wife, happy life.
เด็กเราก็ร้องไห้ไปฮาปี้ไว้ฮาปี้ไลฟ์ A husband is to love his wife sacrificially and unconditionally. This is a happy love. The kind of love that nothing separates. In Romans 8:35 to 13, a b o u a s a n g that he is to give his life up for her, to shelter her, to protect her, to care for her, to provide for her. Okay, na yun naman kung mga wife. For sure, but I think when I'm passing down in Romans 8:35 to 39, it says here, "Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written." For your sake we face death all day long. We are considered a sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more com- we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, life, angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor power nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is the standard na ang husband should I love the wife. Okay tayo din mga wife? For sure. Okay. No, hindi ka. No, kita niyo yun? That's how, wala kayong responsibility ng husband. Ano ba po? A husband is to love his wife With a purifying love, it is his responsibility to wash his wife with the word of God, to provide a continual washing with the truth of scriptures, doctrinally, theologically, morally, that he may be holy and blameless. It is our responsibility as husbands. Pag yung asawa natin ay nag-join na ng kulto, it's our fault. And it is our responsibility to fix that. At kung yung asawa naman natin ay Illustration. Nag cheese marks. I love you, cheese marks. Yeah. Cheese bits to the max. Pag mga sapa naman natin ay nag cheese marks, dahil din nagaya tayo nila, no? pag nag cheese marks, it is our responsibility to review them and correct them and labhan them with the washing of the word. So mga, may mga biblical support ka. Okay po, so let us study harder, mga husbands. Ano ba po? A husband is to give attention to his wife, the same attention he gives to his own body as they are one flesh, otherwise he is hating himself. He is to nourish and cherish his wife. And that's the first, uh, uh, third, uh, second slide I think, we are to love, now first slide, we are uh, about the husband, we are to love him sacrificially. It means, husband is, kung paano kayo obeyin sa body niyo, dapat mas obeyin kayo for your wife. If you need a pedicure and your wife gives the same, and your budget is only good for one, sacrifice, siya yung unang hindi mong pedicure. Okay, well, so, that's how it is. How you take care of your body, that's how you take care of your wife. Okay, tayo yung mga wife. Tayo, kasama ako. So, ito yung mga, let's proceed. The children's responsibility to their parents. Okay, listen. Children, mga malilip, wala dito. No? So, mga youth na lang, listen. Yeah? Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment, with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on earth. And put up our natin dito. Here. Salud. Children. Children are responsible and accountable for their obedience to their parents. God declared it right. They will face God one day and will be accountable for this commandment. Bible, because God directed the children this commandment. Hina pinasa sa parents. That the children obey your parents, children honor your parents. It means if you don't do so, one day when you face God, you will be asked an accounting. Anong ginawa niyo to my command to obey? Example, pag sinabi ng parents niyo, anak, palitan mo yung sinusuot mo, you're not projecting to the world that you're a daughter or a son of a Christian. Palitan mo yan, wear something modest, and shout out to the world that I am a Christian, I am a follower of Christ by the way I dress. Decent and modest, that's it. So, what are you doing? Yes, pa, yes, pa, halay. Bakit? Kung mag-argue pa kayo, nandiyan po ang sabi, God declared it right for you to obey your parents. Yung mga malinit naman, I have observed so many times, when someone's speaking in the front, kids are just running around. And I'm talking about kids that are not aware of right or wrong. These kids know what's right and what's wrong. 
What? And they're just running around and may kita natin, hinasaway ng mga parents, but they just don't care. Pitingin lang, at nakakabul na naman, it's home. Kids, obey your parents. Because that is right. Pag sinabi, no, why should you obey our parents? Ancient may obedience sa parents na yun. May bagay, bata 163 na. No, the Lord declared it right for you to obey. And the Lord is so much wiser than the Lord. And it will pay if you obey your parents. Let's proceed. Children are responsible and accountable to honor their parents as they obey. Ano you honor? Bakit redundant? Is it redundant? Obedience is the act. The honoring is the attitude. Is the manner of how you obey. Nakita natin kanina si Lina at saka si Marlo. Nag-obey naman sila, no? But the way they obeyed was disrespectful. That was dishonoring. It's still a sin in the eyes of God. Because the Lord commanded them, you honor your father and mother. Ano pong reward na? So that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Bakit po? Pag tingnan niyo po sa Deuteronomy 21, ang sinabi doon, yung mga rebellious and stubborn na mga anak daw, dinadala sa gate. Ang gate doon po nagtatambay yung mga elders, pati hari din sa doon nagtatambay sa gate. At sinasabi, ito yung anak kong matigas ang ulo, batungin niyo to death. Ngayon, ngayon, yun ang ginagawa nito. Kaya yung mga, lo, mga buhay pa ng mga 30s, 40s, ibig sabihin mga obedient yun. Kasi yung mga disobedient and dishonoring children, patay na. So, hindi naman pwede natin ibalik yun. No? Kasi meron naman tayo ngayon, you're grounded, face the wall, sit on the air, no iPad for 2 hours. Okay din yun. <laughs> so let me you now it is the children's responsibility because they are commanded by God to obey and honor and it will pay and you obey. Di hindi dapat ganyan yung attitude. No? Pag, pag pinapangaralan ng tatay o nanay, yun yun. Tingnan niyo po sa Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21 mga children. Next now, ano naman yung responsibility ng parents, fathers, or parents, in bang translation, this is addressed to all of us, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Ano po yung exasperate? Galitin. How should we not exasperate our children? For sure, we will have a detailed lesson on this. So maybe by the end of October, kasi may pastor din na assignment this. But we'll just go through it quickly. So as you can see, the father is training the children by example, the child by example. So paano po not to exasperate? One, do not overprotect them. 16 years old na yung anak mo, 17 years old na, hindi mo mo pinapayagal yung sumama sa field trip eh. No, nahihiya yun sa mga klasik na. Lahat sumama na siya, nila mag-isa. Nahihiya yun at mga galing sa, sa, sa inyo. So do not do that, do not overprotect them. Huwag kang sumama, baka magkagalang siya. Baka madukuhan ka ng lano. Ano ba? Hindi naman artista. No favoritism. For those who have two or more kids. No favoritism. Don't show favoritism or don't have favoritism at all. Kasi magkagalit yung hindi favorite. Do not push them to achieve beyond reasonable bounds. Give the account to before. Now I'm okay. Kasi kung pinupost natin beyond reasonable bounds, they're bound to fail. And when they fail, may kita na sa sarili nila, I'm a failure. And eventually, pag nalaman niya, no, it's because you did this to me, mga galing sila sa inyo. Clear? Do not discourage them. Pag nag-fail sa ginagawa nila, huwag natin sabihin, kanya na talaga, because you're a failure, hindi mo kaya yan. No, but instead we have to encourage them, do better next time. Do not use love as a tool of reward or punishment. Pag nagkamali, you withdraw mo yung love mo sa kanya. Pag gumawa naman ng maganda, pinapakita ko, I love you so much. No, that is wrong. Ako may natang gini-disiplina ko nila, but I always make sure to tell you, I love you, my love for you never change, but you have to go through this discipline. Do not make them feel unwanted by failing to sacrifice for them. Every day na lang, 
Busy-busy yung tatay, sila yung tingin, tapos every day yung anak mo. Kaya ito manas ko yung outside. Kami tatay, no, busy ako. Every day ginagawa yun, then what would they feel? They feel, I'm not worth the sacrifice of my dad. I'm not worth the sacrifice of my father or mother's time. I'm worthless. And eventually, magagalit yun sa sarili niya, and magagalit sa parent. And some even commit suicide. Do not physically and verbally abuse them. We can physically and verbally discipline them, but not abuse them. So instead, love, care, provide, guide, and train them to be who God intended them to be. I got this list from John MacArthur. So let's proceed both. Now, this is the fourth point. The evidence of the Father's capability to lead. Verse 4, and verse 4, it says, He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him, and he must do so in a manner worthy of full respect. See, or make sure. Ano po nakita natin dito? If the father, if he says, I'm managing my family well, but ang sabi ni Paul, don't look into his account, don't look into his office, don't look into his friends, don't look into his sports, don't look into his wife, but look into his kids. Kasi mas mahirap na manage yung kids. Look into his kids if they are obedient and respectful to him. Because if the kids are obedient and respectful to the father, to the leader of the house, it means he has what the church needs. And I'm going to need the church, the strength to lead, which results to obedience, and the heart that cares, which results to respect and willing submission to the mga anak. When the kids uh, obey the parents, they're doing it with joy because they know, because my father cares for me, this must be right even if I don't understand it now. So for some reason, respectful obedience, then you are fit for service. Then you are fit to take care of a bigger family that is God's church. If not, then you are unfit. Something needs to be done. And I don't know that in the same verse. What I see here is the father's responsibility. It is the father's responsibility, and it's a heavy command from the Lord to have respectful and obedient children. Kanina nakita natin is the children's responsibility to be obedient and honoring sa nila mga tatay or parents, iba. And dito naman, nakita natin, it is also the father's responsibility now. Whose responsibility is it really? Both. Both it is because God commanded directly straight to the children, obey and honor your parents, and dito naman, God commanded, see to it that your parents and your kids are respectful and obedient to you. It means one day naman ako ninyo ay naging rebellious, disrespectful, naging delinquent, naging criminal. He will suffer the consequence, or she will suffer the consequence, magulong siya. But at the end of the day, when he or she faces God, tatanong niya ng Panginoon, what have you done with my command to obey and honor your parents? Surely, clearly, hindi ka na honor and obey your parents. Kasi ganyan ang nangyari sa'yo. So, ay, ka. But that's just half of the story. The other half of the story is when the father dies, or when Jesus comes, God will demand, Jesus will demand an account from him, accounting from him. What have you done with my command for you to have a respectful and obedient children? So fathers, sana we have a war room where we can just kneel down and cry out to the Lord, Lord, ang tigas ng ulo ng anak ko. But it is my responsibility and it is His responsibility. So we just have to pray harder today. Now, kung ano po? No. It is the father's responsibility. Kasi po, if we don't have this, uh, if we can't manage, that's just sabihin natin, we manage our family well, but then you are not able to have respectful and, and obedient ch uh, children. It means you're failing the management. Let's take, for example, the life of Eli. Kilaan niyo po si Eli? Kilaan niyo po yung dalawa anak niya? Sons of Eli. Si Eli po yun? Si Phineas and Fer. Phineas and Fer, no? No, doon lang si Phineas and Hope. Phineas and Hope Lee. Phineas and Fer, sa kalpong siya niyo. Si Phineas and Hope Lee. Yung dalawa anak niya. Anong ginawa ng anak, dalawa anak niya? Ang ginawa ng dalawa anak niya, because Eli was a priest, ang ginawa ng anak niya, they were fornicating with the ladies, with the women there in the temple. 
Claiming mo, pag ginagawa nila, wala silang respect sa tatay nila, na priest na nagsiserve doon. It means Eli failed with time. Ano naman ba? Kinukuha pa nila yung mga sacrifice. Hindi pa nga na-sacrifice sa Panginoon, kinukuha na nila. The choice portion. Kaya tumaba nga si Eli. Kaya yung one day, ang punishment ng Panginoon sa kanila, they died in the same day, the three of them. Si Eli, ang namatayan niya, bumagsak pa sa upuan. Eh kasi ang taba, so bumagsak sa upuan, ang bali, leo. It means, if you fail to have respectful and obedient children, it may cause you your life and definitely it will cause you your ministry. I understand we have this cutie-cutie relationship ng mga anak natin. Oh, I'm a friend of my son. I'm a friend of my daughter. She can tell me anything she wants. Yung mga crush niya, yung mga ganito niya. That's fine, that's good. As parents, we desire that. But, when this cutie-cutie relationship of yours starts to destroy your parent-children relationship, and they start treating you as any other kid, you have to what? Pick up the rod of discipline, monster up. Beast mode kagad kayo, at paluin. That's biblical. And then, restore the hierarchy in the house. Kasi it's your responsibility to have respectful and obedient children. And it is both, it is good for you both. Our family is the gauge on how we care of God's church. Gauge lang siya, pre-requisite lang siya. Mahikita sa family mo on how you manage and how you can take care of God's church. So let us manage our family well. So, going back to this verse. He must manage his own family well and see that his children obey him. And he must do so in a manner worthy of all respect. If anyone does not know how to manage his family, own family, how can he take care of God's children? What do we see here? Now, I think I'll put it up. This verse number four is for verse number five. The heavier command here, the emphasis here, is take care of God's church. And the qualification for you to take care of God's church is manage your family well. The heavier command is to take care of God's church. So it should be our goal. I have to take care of God's church. I have to serve God with my heart and my strength. Uh, but before that, I have to manage my family well. It means family togetherness. Supposing, okay, you manage my family well. You manage it well and you have this family togetherness. Ang ganda na. Hindi mo lang kailangan ng Bible. Okay na. Isang tawag and so on. And eager yung mga anak. And they're respectful in daily way. Let's say you manage your family well and you have this togetherness now. It says, family togetherness as a result of the management of the family, of the well management of the family, is significant if it impacts the care of God's family, which is the church. The responsibility to manage our own family is as serious as the command to take care of God's church. Ibig sabihin, okay na nga kayo, pero wala nga naman kayo yung box sa family ng dali, ng God's church. You became an aquarium, you're not fishers of men. Naging aquarium lang kayo. Maganda lang yung relationship yun, sa inyo lang. Hindi nyo nagamit in serving the Lord. The heavier command there is to take care of God's church, but the prerequisite is to manage your family well. Are you with me? So, Pano, what are the practical ways for us to have significant family togetherness? It means, what are the practical ways for us to have, we will have family togetherness that we can use to take care of God's church? To both. One, have a regular family devotion and Bible study. Dito niyo po natitrain ang matuturuan ng mga anak niyo. Dito niyo po nalalabhan ng mga verses ng mga asawa niyo. Ang mga asawa niyo makakabawi doon din sa mga anak. Have a regular... Have a regular family prayer time. This is where you come together as a family asking, requesting God, Lord, this is our desire. Lord, we thank you for what you have done for our family. Together. Have a regular family sharing time. This is the talk and listen time. No. Maybe you want to like to share what you want to find out. The Lord has done great things for me. to me today. To you, you want me to find out. You cut me. You cut us. You make us all alone. We must have manner. We are telling us about this. This is the time when we share. 
even the time when we share the struggles and the pains. And this is the time where we evaluate and say, okay, how can I meet the need of my son and my wife? Ito mo sinasabi ng asawa niyo na husband, parang kulang yung paglaban mo sa akin. Hindi biblical yung paglaban sa akin. Wife, parang partial yung pagsasabit mo sa akin. Hindi everything. Ito yung sasabihin ng mga anak niya na ay, ay, parang kulang yung allowance ko. Kung matagal ko kasi ako, eh, gusto, malaki na yung kain ko. Open heart. Ano ko po? Come to church to be together regularly. That's what we're doing right now. And I'm so glad to see there are so many families here that come together, come together for, to worship and praise God and hear His Word and grow together and learn. Have a you and me time as much as you can, husband and wife. Pag may budget, date date naman kayo. Pag walang budget, attend kayo ng MG. May free food. For sure. Have a we time as much as you can to parents and children. Spend time together. For me, it may not be a lot, but we sit with maybe once a week or twice a week, uh, once in two weeks. We spend together. We go to the gym, magkukulitan sa kwarto, watch TV together. These are the things. And aside from having Bible study and devotion time. And of course, make your family togetherness significant. Make your family togetherness, make, put some value some worth sa family togetherness mo, nyo. Take care of God's church. After taking care of your family, now you have respect for obedient children. Now you can see, now I'm fit to take care of God's church. Then let me do it. Don't just stay there at home and, yes, this is all good. So conclusion, since our own families are part of God's family, which is the church, then God wants us to take care of our own families as He wants us to take care of His church. Clear up. So manage your family well and take care of God's family, the church, and make your family count. But what we don't know is just meaningless if you don't have Christ at the center of your family. Give us something to be spirit filled, and then you submit to one another. And then perhaps the biblical well management of the family will happen. If you are spiritual. It means those who do not have Christ in their life, this is impossible. And for you to have Christ in your life, and for you to have to be spiritual, the Spirit of God has to enter at some point in your life first before you are continually spiritual. So it means if you don't have Christ in your life, if you don't have Christ as your Savior and Lord, this does not mean anything to you. Now, how can you get, how can you be spirit, indwelt by the Spirit, and how can you have Christ as your Lord and Savior? First, you have to acknowledge that we are sinners. Romans 3 23 says, For all of us fall short of the glory of God. Look at Matthew 5. It says, We have heard long ago that it was said, Do not commit adultery, do not commit murder. But I tell you the truth, if you're angry with your brother or sister, you are subject to the same judgment. If you look at a woman or a man last week, you are subject to the same judgment. So all of us are sinners, but we deserve death. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, physical and spiritual death. It means your one sin is enough to send us to heaven. Hence, we need a Savior for this to make sense. We need someone to save us from that sin. We need someone to take us out of this way to hell and instead bring us to the narrow road to salvation. Jesus Christ died for you 2,000 years ago, paying for our sins so you don't have to pay for it yourself. John 3 16 says, For God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son, and that is Jesus Christ. And whoever believes in Him, whoever believes that Jesus Christ, pay for your sin and you don't have to pay for it, shall never die. The Lord may be knocking at your 
heart right now. What I'm doing now is a general call. Maybe the Lord is miraculous, miraculously knocking at your heart right now. Making His word effective. Making the sermon effective in your heart. Maybe this is the time now. Now I kneel down and ask Jesus, Lord, be my Savior and Lord, I repent of all my sins. Now I know that I'm a sinner. Now I know that I need you to save me. Maybe this is the time. I would ask everyone to bow down your heads and close your eyes. And if there's any of us here who would like to receive or to ask Jesus to be his Lord and Savior, you can just quickly raise your hand and bring it down to you. Is there anyone here? Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anyone else, anybody else who wants to receive Christ as their personal Savior and Lord? Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, Lord, we truly thank you, Lord, for your reminder today. We thank you, Lord, that you have reminded us that you, that you have commanded the seriousness of God and your command to take care of your family is as serious as your command for us to take care of our own families. We have been reminded, oh Lord, that well management, togetherness of our family and life, you have designed it for your purpose, and that is to take care, to impact your own family and children. Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for the effectual call, Lord God, that you have for those who have raised their hands. And we know, Lord God, that maybe some other people here right now, Lord God, they're shy. Maybe they need more clarification of who Jesus is. But deep down in your heart, Lord, be their heart, Lord God, that you're calling them. Thank you so much, Lord. Our friend, Father in heaven, Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you would reveal yourself more to them. I pray, Lord God, that you would in well, Lord God, that you would send the Holy Spirit today and live in them. Starting today, Lord God, and continue to fill them, Lord God. Of days of their life, hand in hand in Jesus Christ. Father in heaven, I pray, Lord God, that you would use people around them, Lord God, to nurture them, to take care of them, to teach them what Jesus needs. So, Father in heaven, I pray that from this moment on, I, their lives be changed, their lives be lived. Thank you, Lord, for your reminder that we should take care of our family because it is so precious to you. And thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we should take care of our own families because they are so precious to you, even more precious than God, and the way we see them as precious as how we see them as God. We believe for God that you love our family more and more than we love them. So we pray we open heart to God, fill us with your spirit, continue to fill us with your spirit, God, so we can submit to one another and fulfill that you have. Lord, may your name be praised today. May, your, may all glory and honor be yours today, Lord God. Lord, I pray this blessed the sermon will impact each and every family here by your power and by your grace and by your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.